We're on the line with Mark Dixon, who saddles no fewer than eight runners at Hollywood Bet Scottsville on Wednesday, the 13th of January. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for your time. Yeah, hi. Morning, Graham. No problem. No problem at all. OK, let's get straight to it. You start off in race two with a very competitive runner on form, at least in the form of number five, Trumpet Voluntary, who ran a cracker last time out, much better than any of his previous runs. What are you expecting tomorrow? Yes, um, I must say his work on Saturday was excellent. Ashton rode him and he was very happy with him. And uh, I don't see rather there's any reason why he can't reproduce that uh, last run. I'm, uh, I'm expecting a, a really big run, run from him. Short, straight and to the point. Obviously the form with Kimura is very close. There was only a short head between the pair last time out with a couple behind them. Uh, on previous form, Cafe Pacifica may have the edge, but uh, certainly Trumpet Voluntary is coming along the right way. Let's move to race three. You've got two runners here. Both have form. Three Blanchetta and eight Empress Ella. Let's talk about Blanchetta first. Runner-up to She's a Keeper runs at this meeting last time out. Yes, uh, Blanchetta. She's... Uh, <clears throat> she's been battling for a while, but as most people say, Lingar is... Most of them stay, but this one doesn't. This is a best course and distance, 1,200 at Scottsville. She always produces her best. Um, she has been a battling maiden for a while, but, you know, she's uh, she's been working extremely well, and she seems to have come in a coat. I'm, I'm very happy with her, so uh, I'm expecting her to reproduce her last run and, uh, and put up another big performance. Number eight, Empress Ella in the same race. Uh, would you go as far as to say that Empress Ella, who comes into the race also with solid, consistent form, is perhaps a stable elect, or is there nothing to choose between the two? I think ability-wise, Empress Ella is uh, the better horse. Um, but she does have issues. She's got a bit of a temperament, and she does have a few niggly problems here and there. But uh, she's going to the race, she's fit and well, and... Uh, you know, she produces her best shoe. So there won't be much between them on the day. So both competitive in the third race, the first leg of the pick six. You heard it there straight from the horse's mouth from the trainer, Mark Dixon. Let's move on to race four. Here you saddle an interesting runner in the form of number 11, made in France. Uh, landed a bit of a gamble second time out, but fluffed her lines in a first post-maiden effort. No, well, second time... Um... No show last time. It was at Scottsville. It was the last race of the day, and that was when we had all that rain, and it was soft. It was basically horrible. And when she came under pressure and off the bridle, she basically just stopped galloping. So I'll just put a line through that. Um, providing we don't get any more rain between now and then, I think uh, she'll, she'll show a big improvement. She's, I like her a lot. Um, obviously, that win was on the poly, but I don't see any reason why she won't go on the grass when it's good ground. You're coming up in against a couple of useful sorts here in the form, particularly of Elle's Flaming Beauty, Hugs Accepted, She's a Keeper. You think she's up to matching strides with those on her best form if she produces her best? I think 80 is a bit harsh at this moment in time. I think she, she you know, I think she's got a, a reasonable place chance. I would be a little surprised if she won. OK, so let's move on then from Made in France in race four. You saddle a couple of runners in race six. And in particular, nine Jackson Wells looks to come in the race with a bright chance of winning. Yeah, I really like Jackson Wells. I think she's better on the grass. I think this is ideal for the uh, track trip <clears throat> and on the grass. I think uh, she's possibly my best runner on the day. Her homework being good? Very good. Ashton's very happy with her. Look, competitive field, but... Uh, she only won one race, but I think up to date she's been unlucky on a couple of occasions. So, uh, no, um, as I say, I think she's my best runner on the day. I like her a lot. Well, that clearly tells us she's better than a stable companion. She's a dream who seems to have lost her way a little bit. Uh, any signs of some improvement from she's a dream? Well, she displaces and she's made a bit of a respiratory noise on her, on her way, but she's, no, she's done well. She will be going to stud this year later on, but, you know, I've just... She loves to put it this way. She's a different horse at Scottsville. She hasn't been there for a long time. So, you know, we're hoping to see some improvement. If not, then, you know, I just might uh, retire her and leave her to go to uh, Spring Valley in the, in, um, in the season. OK, so clear preference uh, for number nine, Jackson Wells, who Mark makes his best runner on the day. But you close out with two runners in the eighth race, neither of which are 
strongly fancied in any shape or form. Let's talk about number four, Baby Africa, first. Uh, yet to find her feet. Yeah, disappointing, really. I mean, this all the time has always shown me nice work, and to date, obviously, as you say, she's showed us absolutely nothing on the course. I said to Gabriel the other day, he came and worked, and he couldn't believe how well she worked. It's an interesting runner. I think the mile is a bit too far. Um, seven furlongs, claim four. Uh, we'll take her up nice and handy and, and uh, see how she fares. If she reproduced her work at home, she would have a good place chance. But as I say, we, you know, she's uh, been disappointing to date. So certainly if one is looking, viewers are looking to find a Ruffy to include into the back end of quartets on her track work, no surprise to see Baby Africa perhaps fulfilling that role. No, definitely. That's what I would say, yeah. All right, the stable companion is number 12, Red Hot Chili Girl. She's been anything but red hot up to this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's just a um, uh, wide draw. She's just giving her a run for experience, and we're hoping just to see some improvement. So uh, <clears throat> we'll just, the jury's still out on her at the moment. Mark, thank you for your time. You've declared that you believe Jackson Wells to be your best runner on the day, although obviously Trumpet Voluntary, Blanchetta, Empress Ella all come into their respective races with chances. We thank you for your time. Have a good day. No problem. Thanks, Graham. Bye.